All right, today's project is to put this little baby, brand new GPR steering stabilizer that includes the rubber mount handlebars and the triple clamp onto this bike. 2022 KTM 500 EXC. One of the things I do whenever I'm working on my bike is I use the kit that I take out on the trail with me. So I have a couple different kits that go out on the trail with me on every ride. Uh, if you do all the work in your garage with that kit, then you will identify things that you need to put in your kit that might not be in the kit. So that helps. And then if I have to reach into my toolbox that stays at the house, I have a tendency to uh, replace that tool in my tool bag so that I know I can do anything on my bike or virtually anything on my bike when I'm out on the trail. So, A couple of days ago I saw Mike from Taco Moto post a video about putting dielectric grease on the electrical fittings behind your number plate and under your tank under your seat and I had not done that on my previous bike and I discovered that uh, when I took it apart to get ready to sell it was a 2015 in fact a lot of the connectors had corrosion in them and when I tried to pull them apart it was white and chalky and dusty inside there uh, as well as they were difficult to get apart and you know that could have caused a problem apparently it didn't on mine but it could have certainly caused a problem so putting dielectric grease inside the connectors and around the connectors so that water can't get in uh, is a big deal uh, even just washing your bike just having water flowing down behind your number plate could fill the back side of these wires with water and then having them hold water like this is a great example right here this little connector water could come down into that and just fill those full of water and sit there and then as it dries it leaves a little bit of minerals and residue in there and after several years of doing that leaving minerals and residue in your bike uh, could make those wires have a short well so the first thing I'm going to do is take off the front headlight shroud because I've got to get to a lot of things that are behind there all right we've got the number plate off and I see lots of the connectors under here that need to be greased so I'm just going to go through and start greasing them and I guess what you need to know is if the grease goes in the back side of these you just dab a bit of the grease in there and both sides will probably turn it over get some in the inside they kind of massage it in with your fingers and then of course you want to take them apart and get a little bit in there too in both the male and the female section just trying to keep water out uh, there are a couple connections under the seat that you have to be careful of because they will actually they have seals on them and if you put a bunch of grease inside you can't get them together because they'll I guess it's hydro lock because there's so much grease in there so be careful when you do those but out here it looks like none of those have that hydro lock potential so all right time to get started all right, I'm just gonna take a few wires out and get started on them Here's one that's not sealed right here, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of get access to it and squeeze some of this dielectric grease so it gets up there on the wires and around the, where the wires go in and just kind of squeeze it down in there and massage it down in with my finger and we'll do the same to the other side. This is a mess. Shouldn't be a surprise that it's a mess, but it will do good things in the long run. Right, this is a good job to have lots of paper towels around. Because I'm kind of a neat freak and I don't want to have goop all over the inside of my back of my motorcycle shroud. Also, one of the things here I notice is when your fingers get nice and lubricated with silicone dielectric grease, I don't have enough grip to pull these things apart. <laughs> All right, so here's one that I can see the female connectors right there, so I'm just gonna dab some of this in there. Massage it down in a little bit. You really can't get at the other side very good because they're deep set, so I believe by dabbing it in there, basically it's gonna smear on them. And I'll just put a little bit in there and see, if it, see how it works. This is a test. So 
So there we go. Now let's just see if when I squish it together, it should screw it out the side a little bit. Yep, just like with that. So squirt it out right here. Squirt it out on the back side. So just kind of wiping things up. Now some of these little wires, they look like they're sealed. So these little connectors, they're sealed on the back and they're sealed with a, a ring around the front, so I don't think I need to do those. This one is sealed quite nicely also. So there's a few up here that we may need to do. And there's a big one right here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's the big one there. All right, back to the job. Well, I know I have to take off these two nuts up here at the top because this is how the bracketry all mounts to the triple clamps and that's going to be removed and that'll also make it a lot easier for me to get at some of those wires in there. Oh, there's a little ground wire that's on that one so I need to remember that. And that will make it a lot easier to access some of these wires and grease them up. All right, now I've got to pull off the handlebar clamps because I've got to get the handlebars out of the way for all this and that will also help me grease up those wires underneath. All right, getting these clamps out of here and out of the way. So now the handlebars are literally ready to lift off. I'm just gonna gently put them down here and get them out of the way. All right, now I have access to the top triple clamps and the bolts that hold everything together here. I can take those apart. All right, now we can start removing the triple clamps. I use the same tool that I take with me on my, in my tool bag. And that's what a 17, yep, so that's a 17. I'll try to break that loose. Yep, not too tight, good. So I can remove that. And I can remove the pinch bolts here, pinch bolt here, pinch bolts here, and I'll be able to remove the top triple clamp. Now just so you know, the bike is up on a center stand and the front wheel is elevated right now. So you can see there's no weight on the front forks because when you're only supported by the bottom fork clamp, you have to be very careful about that. You don't want to break or bend anything. Okay, there's the O-ring on there, so I'll make sure that stays. Now, as I set these down, it's gonna, yep, I knew it, it's gonna pop off. So I see where that O-ring went and I'll get it, but here's the top triple clamp. All right, here's the part where I normally read the instructions after I've got everything all taken apart. So I'm gonna read the instructions and figure out how to put on the bottom bracket. And uh, I've already dis dismounted these top brackets so they're ready to put on. And I'm going to move the adjustable handlebar mounts all the way forward, because I'm a little bit bigger guy and I like to have a little more room in between my handlebars and my seat and my foot pegs. So that's something I'll do now. Probably Loctite everything together with the blue removable Loctite so nothing vibrates loose. Now these are the rubber mounted handlebars. I've never had these before, but this is something they just came out with. And so I wanted to give it a try. So a slight bit of rubber in there to make the handlebars have a little more pliability. Good for keeping my hands relaxed and my arms alive for the long six or eight hour rides. All right, now that we've got that top trip clamp off and out of the way, got the front tire braced with the block so it can't roll forward. You don't want it to fall out from underneath and leave you hanging. So I've got access to the brand new steering head bearing up here and the race so I can make sure that that's greased well I can put a little more grease in there and of course now I've got access down here to the bottom race as well so a lot of people worry about those not being greased enough so here's your chance to add a little grease if you wish mine look like they're greased quite excellently from the factory so I'm not too worried okay now I've placed on the triple clamp bracket this is the lower bracket right here that that's what the steering damper keys into to make it so it won't let the head shake. So you can see I've got a drip of blue Loctite on there. It says right on the instructions, no red Loctite. And when you tighten this bolt, you're supposed to only tighten it to nine foot-pounds. 
which isn't that much and it says be aware that if you tighten it over it will break so this clamp is capable of putting quite a bit of uh, torque at just nine foot pounds so I'm gonna snug it up here a little bit and I'm gonna get out my torque wrench and torque it to nine foot pounds I've also put the uh, seal that goes around this cap and the cap is now placed back down on there and then I do need to remember to put this o-ring back on place that down and then the triple clamp will go on top okay now we've got the top triple clamp in place I was able to torque this little screw right here to nine foot pounds and now I've gently tapped it down and everything seems to be flush important stuff is to make sure that this level is down either right at the top where the triple clamp I'm sorry where the top of the fork tube meets the tightening nut the top of the nut or the second one down depends on the level that you want it at and then you kind of got to look underneath up in here and make sure that all the gaps are gone in between this chrome cap and the steering damper is where that o-ring is so there will be just a slight little gap there but down below you want to make sure everything's tight and level you can check it from the front and the opposite side over here just making sure that everything's level tight because you're not going to get a chance to get at this again so now's your chance and of course because i wasn't thinking i had the handlebars laid forward on the front fork or on the front fender forgetting that these throttle cables need to go behind this bracket so I just had to pull the triple clamp back off again and now I have to pull the handlebars up and get that handlebars I'm sorry get the throttle cable back behind <laughs> so I can't do that with one hand while I'm holding a GoPro so I'm gonna turn it off and get that done now I've got this remounted and I've got the throttle cables behind the triple clamp. I've got this bolt tightened but not torqued yet. I'm going to torque that in a minute and there's an adjustment I need to do to make sure the head is you know, set correctly. I've got this little clamp that goes on here. It goes right in between the handlebar clamp and then a bolt goes through it with the top clamp and that keeps the uh, the top clamp there that keeps the throttle cable in place so I'm going to go ahead and assemble that all now and gently tighten down the handlebars so they're not flailing around here let's see now I've got the top bolt torqued I've got the pinch bolts torqued on both sides and the pinch bolt here torqued this was already torqued down here to nine foot pounds just like the instructions said and I put the little front panel back on with the bolts that go in through here so that's bolted back up. Now what I need to do is I need to set the steering damper in place and make sure that it sets correctly. And this little pin has to go right through. So that pin sticks through and is flush. And so that's what you want to see. So that is just about perfectly flush. It's sticking up about a 32nd of an inch. And I think that's what we're looking for. So now I'm going to tighten these two bolts down and then that will be in place. And I'm ready to mount the handlebars. Okay, now we got the steering damper on. I tightened it to both of those bolts down, double checked the level of that pin coming up right there, and it's just perfect. I got the wire grabber in place, and I'm about ready to torque these bolts here. But first, I needed to sit on the bike and see where the handlebars felt correct. So, using these little marks down here, you make sure the handlebars are centered and that the marks are symmetrical on both sides and that the forward and rearward roll of the handlebars is what you want so i've got it about where i want it right now and so now i'm going to go ahead and torque those bolts down and that will be my new permanent bar mount then i'm just going to double check the bolts because my handlebar guards didn't line up exactly the same so I've left them loose also 
and I'll align those and put those bolts back through, get that ready to go. And then we're getting close. Then I can start putting the front end back together and we'll have a finished product. Now I've got the whole damper installed, everything locked down. Now that the handlebars are a little farther forward, I can access the damping adjusters on the top of my forks on both sides, which is nice because I couldn't get at those before because the handlebars were right over them. I can also get at my fork bleeders up here in the front. So that's nice. Throttle cable is set. It won't come loose and it won't rub on anything. So that's perfect. The only problem I've got after installing everything is that my phone mount is now pushed a little farther up on the handlebar where it's thinner. And so unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to get a different bushing for that to make that clamp down because it's clamped at the maximum tightness on both nuts right now. And it's still moving around. So there's my only hiccup, but I can fix that. That's not a problem. I've reinstalled my front headlight shroud and number plate, moved all the wires around so that I could get that back in place. And that's good. Nothing's sticking out. Nothing's where it shouldn't be. And it seems like that job is just about done. Now all I have to do is pull off the tank and the seat and silicone. I guess it's not silicone, but it's, let's see what this is called. Dielectric silicone compound. I have to put some of that on the wires and the unions under the seat and the tank so those don't get water in them. And that's about all I have to do. So we're getting almost done here. So now with the tank off and the seat off, you can see some of the connectors that are under the seat. I can see at least a couple candidates for some grease. This one here has clearly got an open back and an open front that could get some water intrusion. This one here appears to be sealed both front, top and bottom. I look up in there and it's hard to see, but there is little seals up in there. And this one appears to have a gasket in the center as well, but I'll pull that apart and take a look at it. Not too tough on that one. Clearly this one has got a open back and needs to be sealed. It might need to be looked at, so I'll put a little of that dielectric grease on those and get that set. I think everything else has been taken care of already. So on the right side of the bike, under the tank, I did have a couple spots that were, I was able to put in some dielectric grease. I pulled off the spark plug cap, of course, and dabbed some around the tip top of the electrode on the, I'm sorry, the tip top of the spark plug tip, the metal part, and then slide that back down. And that just makes it seat nice and smooth and keeps water out of that connection. And then I was able to pull this protective cover off, unplug that cap, put a little bit of dielectric grease on there, put it back in, shove this down, and then put a little grease up around the fitting just to keep water out from getting in there. And that's about it on this side. Well, I just took it on a test ride to make sure that everything felt centered and complete. And in fact, it does. One note I should make is that I noticed that my steering damper was bottoming out when I turned it all the way to full lock before my steering head adjustment bolt was hitting. You can tell because when it hits on this bolt, it's a nice solid sound. It makes a nice solid metal to metal sound. And really it was fine on the right side, but the left side was the one that stock, this little bolt right there, that bolt needed to come out a little bit. It only bottomed out on the left. So that just means that instead of the fork bottoming out, it was bottoming out at the maximum throw of the steering damper so I had to back that out just a little bit. I know a lot of people uh, take those out or don't want them at all but I never go full lock. I do ride forests and even in riding the forests I don't seem to have a problem with that so not a big deal for me. Uh, all the components work, my speedo works and all that stuff so that means I hooked all my electrics back up correctly and it seems like we are ready to go. So that's the completion installing the GPR stabilizer with the top triple clamp mount. Hope you guys have a great day. Go ride.